From New York, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yeah, I don't like it. And, now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. We had a call on the program. Uh, This has been happening more and more. There's a call that comes in, and it just irks me. Or it really flips me out. And this call that we received in the previous hour on the show uh, is no exception. Here was a woman who was complaining that uh, she married, she had kids, and that her husband is not romantic enough. Now she wants a divorce. Oh, he sends cards and stuff, but he's not romantic enough goes to work, he makes money, he pays for everything, he comes home, but it's just not enough. It's just not enough. And I gotta say, the nagging thing is she can't see how nagging is the reason that men are not romantic and will not be romantic after mommy has been coming into the house and telling us what to do every day, every day giving us lessons on how to be more responsible or how to do the laundry or how to cook or uh, remember to pay the bills or remember to stop off at the grocery store and it goes on and on and on and on and on. There is no room for romance. You cannot romance your 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 drill sergeant. Women do not see how nagging kills relationships. Kills them. They can't see it. It's it's beyond me. And hearing her explain why she needed to nag. Things might get out of control. What would happen if I lost control? You see, that's what it's all about. Control. How can you be romantic with your slave master, with your drill sergeant, with someone who's barking orders? How can you be romantic with that person? How can you want to get engaged in foreplay with that person? Can you tell me? Outrageous. I have more romance now in my life. I have more fun in my life. When I am with a female companion, I am having more fun than I've ever had before. And part of that is that they can't get under the hood and start criticizing how, you know, how sausage is made. I mean, the great thing now is everything I say is right, everything I do is right, every joke I tell is funny. (laughs) I'm not wrong, 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 wrong. I'm right, 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 right. And the result is that the sex is great. The result is that the, the time together is great. It's nothing but fun. Fun. You know how many women I've been with in serious, quote-unquote, serious, they'll call them serious relationships for nothing because they are as serious as a heart attack. You know how many times I've been in serious relationships with women and I've said to them, "Uh, you know, a relationship is supposed to be fun. I'm not making this up. That's what I say. It's supposed to be fun. Remember fun? Remember when we used to have fun? I I just can't get hot after you've been telling me to take the garbage out all day. I can't do it. 
I mean, marriage is a romance killer. There's just no doubt in my mind. It's a sex killer. It's not an accident that most of the people you know who are married have a lousy sex life. Guys who have been married more than five years show signs of ED no matter what their age is. These are stories we've read to you on the air recently. I don't have an ED problem. You know why? <laughs> because I don't have a wife. Because nobody nags me. Anytime somebody nags me, I label them as TMW, too much work, and I drop kick them right out the door. It's that simple. It's that simple. Jesus. And they don't get it. They don't understand it. They think they, they can yell at you and threaten you and tell you how wrong you are and how bad you are and how forgetful you are and how unfunny you are. And then after all of that, they think that uh, you're going to want to, uh, you know, spend uh, 45 minutes doing foreplay on them. I mean, these women are living in, in a delusion. Yes, marriage is boring, and that is because marriage is a business arrangement. That is what it is. Why can't women see this? 1-800-500-866. Never give a chick your cell phone number or your pager number until you've seen if she's shaved or unshaved. <laughs> Amen. This is the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Women nag and nag and nag and then they complain, oh, you're not romantic. What is that? You're kidding me, right? John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you, Tom? Do you care, Joe? Yes, sir, I do. I'm doing great. That's good. I've been listening to your show for a couple of years now. Um, you're doing everybody a great service. Uh, I wish I had started listening before, um, before I actually got married and started a family. I've been but, servicing uh, the audience one listener at a time. I want you to know that. Yeah. Um, I've, been, grow I've so been growing that female demographic. Yeah, I, I believe you have. There's been a lot, a lot of women callers lately. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to comment on was the um, the ED thing. Yes. Um, what is up with that? Is that serious? Like, people are really buying into that? Because I've been married for almost six years, and I've never had that kind of an issue at all. Well, first of all, they say it's five years or more. So yeah, you just got over you just got over the five-year hump. Maybe it'll happen in a year. Maybe it'll happen in three years. You know what I believe the problem is, honestly? I believe that these these men are just basic pussies, and they're letting their wife have their balls, and they're not taking charge of things. That's probably why they're having this issue. I think they're having the issue because they need to see new meat once in a while, preferably without stretch marks. Well, that's a very big possibility, too. You know, there's nothing wrong with that every once in a while, you know? Yeah, Got to get a little strange in there. Well, whatever it takes to keep you happy. You know, I mean, you can't be happy. I I, I told you I have stuff. given. I gave it out on the air. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the there is one organic, purely natural cure for ED. What's that? I didn't catch that part. Well, yeah, YG. YG, young girls? Yes, young girls, exactly. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It takes Trust time me, time. I do not, I do not, I have never taken Viagra. Ever. You know what, that I believe. Never that. taken Cialis. Never. Well, I just... What you to... take is some nice, smooth skin with no wrinkles, no turkey neck, no uh, stretch marks, no big blue vein like a thunderbolt going from her navel down to her hoo-ha, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. I know exactly what you're talking about. The, the, no chicks with FUPA. FUPA is out. Yeah. No FUPA. And, you know, if you do that, it's amazing. You don't need any Viagra. Yes, 
sir. You know what I always said on this program? Uh, remember when uh, Bob Dole was doing the commercial for Viagra? <laughs> yeah. Ever, have you ever seen Mrs. Bob Dole? No, I haven't. She ran for president, for God's sake. Elizabeth Dole, you don't know about that? Uh-uh, I, I don't well, want If you to... ever saw Mrs. Bob Dole, you'd know why Bob Dole needs Viagra. And by the way, ever seen Mrs. Mike Ditka? Mike Ditka, no, sir. Uh, you'd know why he needs Cialis. Who was it? Uh, Mark Martin, the race car driver. Didn't he drive the Viagra car? Wasn't he in all the Vi Viagra commercials, too? I, I don't follow the commercials that closely. All I know is whoever's dating Jessica Alba doesn't need Viagra. I'm telling you right now. Oh, no. It's not. Yeah. So, really, Viagra is the way you get aroused looking at fat and ugly women. Yes, sir. I believe you're absolutely right. Well, you're you're such an easy customer here. <laughs> well, I just, it was good talking to you. Can you take me out? I'm sure it was. Uh, what style? Um, blow me up. Oh. Of course I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Uh, the ratings and my paycheck. You, you should get a look at it. Nice. First time, long time. Hey, yes. man, uh, to get to the point, so I've been married for a while. A little bit of exception to your rule, but I don't want to get into that too much. Um, when I was younger, my wife would start nagging. And I started telling her to get the hell out, and she stopped nagging. I have found that that has been very effective with uh, not only for me, but for many of the men I've told about that. I mean, yes. I have said, I have mastered this phrase, there's the door. Exactly. Uh, you there's the door. I mean, <laughs> what? You might use it? Do it! Yeah, yeah. So I can't, you Do guys, it! No problem, leave. <laughs> You know, you know how to use a door. Yeah, that was it, man. I just wanted to let you know. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you did. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. You'll be shocked. You see the look on her face when you say that? She'll be shocked that you had any goddamn balls. Kidding me? <laughs> I'll show you some romance. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What up, Tom Like Kizzle, my nizzle? <laughs> Not much, Chris. <laughs> long time, bro, long time. Hey, um, you know, I just want to basically touch bases because if you think about it, you know, the comment you said right before your, your commercial break was, why can't women, real, you know, see that it's a business transaction? That's because they can't see the business part until it's time to get a divorce, if you know what I mean. Oh, I don't agree with that at all. I think women very clearly see the business part. That is why they drill you and drill you about getting married. Yeah, okay. I see what you said. I was just kind of looking at it like, you know, that they look at the romance and stuff in the beginning. It's this, that, and the other, like that loony chick was saying, you know, uh, earlier. And then, you know, once it's, you know, you guys, they get a divorce or whatever, that's when they start realizing, oh, I can get money. So. Yeah, well, I, I think they realize that right from the beginning because the fact is, you know, women can live with you or they can date you or they can have a baby with you or they can do all these things. Why is it so important to get married? The reason is because they know exactly what kind of cash and prizes they're going to get if things don't work out. You know what, Tom? I have to agree with you. Could you take me out a special way? Movie theater, porno style? Movie theater, porno style. That's a THX with a money shot and well, a standing we, ovation. We'd love to use THX, but we got a cease and desist from Industrial Light and Magic, the company owned by George Lucas. Oh, so really? We can't use T yes, we can't use THX anymore. All right, well, a simple money shot and uh, two we got we, we got another brew for you. Here you go. Are we going to give him the money shot, too, or just the music? A 
looking for the money, Sha. You know, we have uh, Art, who's our new engineer. He just started with us uh, this past summer, and uh, he has to find where Brett left everything. There it is. <laughs> he found it. Was was it labeled money shot? Oh, splat. It was labeled splat. But everybody on the show calls it a money shot. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Sandra on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's Sandra. How are you? I know. I just said that, dear. I'm doing great. <laughs> um, this is what I have a question. You're talking about women nagging all the time. and My husband says that I always nag. My question is, why do we have to nag? You don't. Why can't we just ask once and you do it? How about you do it yourself? Because I already do 90% of everything else. How about if uh, that's the way it is, you married the wrong guy? <laughs> that's what I thought you were going to say. Okay. Thanks, Tom. But well, wait a minute. That's so uh, does that mean you're just going to continue nagging? I mean, the point no, is, I why be that. married if you're going to be in a battlefield all the time? Why be married if you have to be the drill sergeant all the time? I don't understand it. What no, joy I do you totally get out of it? I totally agree with you. I actually I don't get any joy out of that. I want to tell all my exes right now that nagging is a big factor in why I booted every one of you out the door. And I would do it again, this time faster. Mm hmm. I totally agree. I actually quit. And nagging. I challenge any ex of mine, Hello? if you're within the sound of my voice, I challenge don't tell me how to do this show. I'm the host of the show, remember. And I Hello? challenge any ex of mine. Hello. I challenge any ex of mine out there right now to come back to the house and see how well organized and well maintained everything is. It's cleaner than when you left, girls. Well, you're, you're, you're a good guy then because my husband doesn't touch a thing. Well, let me tell you, if he was living alone, it would be clean because he'd have girls coming over on dates. And uh, he'd want that place to be spotless. Yeah, you're probably right. It's just sad that we can't just ask once and have them do you it. Shouldn't, oh, you shouldn't. Know, the point say. is, if you have to ask, uh huh, you were the wrong guy. I mean, the point is, wow. you either do it yourself. By the way, who cleaned your house when you lived alone? You. Yes, true. So if it's that important to you, just do it. I do. <laughs> I can't but don't, but no, don't, no, no, but I, when I say just do it, that means just do it. That doesn't mean do it and then complain about it. That no, doesn't mean first nag him, then do it, then complain about it. It means just do it. Okay, I do, I do, but if no, no, I don't you, but complain, you don't, you don't just that. do it. No, just do it means only do it. No, just I, do it doesn't mean do it and nag. No, I just totally do it agree. means do it and shut up. Yep. You know what your husband would love to say to you? Do what? it and shut up about it. But he can't because he's pussy whipped. But I'm not married to you and I don't want to have sex with you. So I'm telling you, just do it and shut up. <laughs> but as a woman, you're hardwired. You can't just do it and shut up. You're going to do it and then you're going to extract uh, no, emotional no, payback. For I quit it. nagging. I'm done. I just want to know why we had, why I had to nag in the first place. But you pretty much told me I'm married to the wrong guy, I guess. Or, guess what? Before you were married, you did it yourself. Yeah, for myself, but now there's me and him. Why so should I what? Clean up mine and his. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, you know what? Yours and his isn't much more than what you had by yourself. Because you, before, when you were by yourself, you had you were dating guys, you had friends come over, they left a message, you said, oh, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it. That's how you were. In I fact, when he visited you, you did the same thing. I guess it just seems a little selfish. I, I don't understand. It's not a matter of Especially selfishness. When I work too, I work full time. You uh, you had kids. a job before you were with him, and when you lived alone, and everything got done, didn't it? No, I never had a child until I until I got married. It's not, well, again, dear, you know, the point is, before you had that child, you knew his propensity for not doing the things you want him to do. You knew it, right. and you had a kid with him anyway. Two of them. <laughs> Whose fault is that? 100% mine. <laughs> right. Hang on a second here, Sandra. Let me say hi to Brian. Brian, what did you want to say here to Sandra? Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. 
I just wanted you to remind this bitch about what happened. What's that one clip that we always play on the show about that guy that killed his wife for nagging? She enticed oh, him. You remember Freddie that Wilhite. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let Freddie Wilhite be your guide. Here he is. I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. I think she did. I can't believe that guy called me a bitch. <laughs> He's still there. I can't believe it. I can't believe you would even say that. That is that is unbelievable. I'm the the least bitchiest person you've ever met in your life. Ask your husband that. God, yeah, he'd agree. Because I quit the nagging. I quit it. He'd, he'd agree because she'd be standing next to him with a gun to his head. That's right. No way. No way. God None damn it. You I better tell him. Done. Tell them I'm not a bitch. God damn it. <laughs> it just doesn't get done. Like Tom said, I basically came to the conclusion I'd do it myself. So I'm not nagging. And and even when I did nag, he still wanted to have sex. That no, I didn't get that part at all. He, that didn't affect it at, at all. <laughs> Anytime. Any time. It didn't matter if he, if he was mad at me or not. The God needs. You know what? If I have an argument with somebody, it doesn't mean I don't need to drink a water. <laughs> it doesn't mean I don't need to go to the bathroom and do number one. Okay? <laughs> okay. And, and having sex is kind of the same thing. Well, I got to say you're different because I can tell you're the clean type of guy, but my husband's not the clean type of guy. No, but here's the thing. I'd nag you. No, I wouldn't nag you. I'd kick you out like I did the other slop. Oh, you, you're funny. Yeah, laugh it up. No, he wouldn't kick me out. Ask all the exes, all living in the gulag. He wouldn't kick me out. I'm his, I'm his sugar mama. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second, Sandra. James, what did you want to say to Sandra? Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. I got a word, I got a, a name for chicks like Sandra. I call them in my house erection killers. She could kill an erection, uh, you know, she could kill a morning wood just like that. Uh, she's a by, what? by how? She's, what? By doing what? Because you're, I can just tell by your voice that you're a life-sucking vortex of need and complaint. Who are you to ask your husband and get on the radio and complain about your husband not doing what you ask him to do? I mean, who cares what you ask him to do? If he does what you want him to do, then you stay with him. And if he doesn't, if it's so intolerable, then you leave him. But you save us all the gab about it, all the talk. And, I mean, that's all you want to do. You want to bust this guy, the poor guy's balls every day, day in and day out. And I can't even imagine what it must be like to wake up and hear your voice. As soon as I heard your voice on the radio, I just knew this chick here is an erection killer. You're the one that's annoying. I don't even, I can't even believe that you're even saying the things that you're saying. You're so disgustingly annoying. You need to get off the phone. You don't even know what you're talking about. You didn't even listen to what I said. Did I say I didn't love my husband? No. Am I cutting him down? No. My original question was, why do we have to ask more than once? That's it. Period. That's all I said. You don't know that what you're talking like a, about. That sounds like a question that somebody's mom asked them, not their wife. And besides, uh, does your does your husband take Viagra or Cialis by chance? Oh, God, no. And he doesn't need it. Please. You're so off the subject. You're blowing my mind. I don't, I don't know. know what you need to hang up because you're not making sense. You're just getting on there to bitch. That's it. You're the one that sounds maybe like a should, bitch. Maybe I should have done what you asked me the first time, and then everything would be okay with you. Yeah, maybe you should have because you're the one that's going off the deep end talking about what you don't even know. I didn't get on here to cut up down my husband. My original question was, why do we have to ask more than one? You and are you know talking what? with me, and I remain convinced that you're an erection killer. Well, you're wrong, maybe in your book, but you can call my husband and guarantee you he's not going to say I'm an erection killer. Guarantee. I call him like I see him. I call him like I see him. I've been listening to Lycus 101 for a long time, and I have so a lot have of life experience. I was to Lycus for years. Our heart on you, babe. Okay, <laughs> bye. All right, bye. All right. Yeah. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for the calls. Tom Lycus. 1-800-5-800-TOM. My wife and I will be together forever. Oh, my God. Don't you think everybody who gets married says that? I don't know. I know. I, I said it four times. It's the Tom Likas Show. From the CBS 
Sports Broadcast Center in New York City. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Don't forget, we're going to London, England, and our first show will be Monday from London. First time the Tom Likas Show is broadcast from Europe. I've been to Europe. I've spent uh, about four weeks in Europe in the last 12. I was on two vacations, but not England. So my third trip to Europe since July. Wow. Hardcore. But now that hockey season is starting, I'll be in town a lot more. I got it all out of the way. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Michelle. Oh, there she is. Michelle, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Um, long time, six years. Um, my husband and I listened to you before we got married, and we've been married for four years. And uh, I kind of have a question comment to someone that made a comment earlier about um, talking to your women and telling them to get out the door and, um, you know, take it outside. You know, I don't want to see you. There's the door. And my husband... Actually, yeah, that was me. I said that. <laughs> well, my husband... It's not really funny, actually. It's sad. He he said he wanted to separate. He did that to me a couple months ago, and it pretty much floored me. And um, he really opened my eyes to our relationship. And you know, we had we were able to talk about his needs, and it really identified more about you know what he needed and what he was not getting out of the relationship. So it does work. Um, I think it's a better way than just leaving them, but it does also open a line of communication. So how, I don't understand. He told you there's the door and then you changed? Or he told you to get out and then you changed? I'm not clear. Um, basically, I went out. Well, the story is he felt that I was spending more time with my friends than with him. And... Um, and he wanted to kind of find out why, you know, what's going on. And he basically thought that our relationship wasn't working out. And he asked, he thought we should separate. And I was totally caught off guard. Wow. Um, we did talk, you know, a lot more. We're not going to separate, but it did open my eyes to, you know, his needs and what he was going through. And he's a, a, a like a um, schooler. Um, but um, he does listen a lot, and a lot about what you said kind of triggered my mind, and that's why I called. I'm wondering if he heard your comment. <laughs> Maybe he did, because I've said these things before. <laughs> so um, another question I wanted to ask, something you were talking about, uh, ED, and, you know, I really want to keep my husband, and I want to keep him happy and satisfied, but I'm having a hard time losing weight i'm not that overweight but you would consider me chunky and um wanted how'd to know, you get chunky in the first place um i don't know i've had hormonal problems i work out i do a lot of things I think were you chunky like, when he married you um he considered me a little bit chunky when he married me i was not so you're chunkier so now i'm yeah i'm 15 pounds chunkier now that's not because of hormones um, stress? Not because of stress. You need a forkectomy. Well, I've fasted for a few days, and I've, you know, done the Atkins diet for two months now, and I've only lost three pounds. Yeah, dear, the, the Atkins diet, which I've done, and I know all about it. I mean, so what do you eat, a pound of bacon for breakfast and no, a block of I cheddar eat, cheese for I, lunch? No, I eat turkey bacon and a lot of chicken and, um, you know, some cold cuts, um, but I don't overdo it. I'm pretty confident. Did you ever try just having a low-calorie diet and working out? By the way, where do you work out? Uh, 24. And you go there how often? Three times a week. Maybe you need to do it more. Have you uh, gone and seen uh, a dietitian or somebody who can uh, take a look at your body chemistry? I've done the personal trainer when they check the amount of calories that you've burned and I've no 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 I mean somebody does blood work on you uh, I did a little bit of blood work with my regular doctor but not a dietitian well maybe you need to, to, to talk to your doctor about that and tell him you need to find a more effective way to lose weight 
Yeah, it's really important to him because he tells me that he doesn't want to be with me because he's not physically attracted to me. Well, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah. That's a red flag, dear, and you really need to uh, respond to it or be prepared for the consequences. Yeah, I, I want to respond to it and try to lose weight, or more weight, I should say. Right, but that doesn't mean eat more turkey bacon. I think that means you need to go to the doctor and get uh, you know a whole battery of tests done. Uh -huh. um, and and get a diet that has been recommended by a doctor. Okay. I would be willing to bet you're not doing the Atkins diet in coordination with your doctor. You you went and bought the South Beach diet book or one of those, and you're you're doing it out of the book. Yes. No, you have to do whatever you're doing in coordination with your doctor. Okay. Okay. Well, that's about it. Can you blow me up, Tom? Of course I can, dear. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to uh, <laughs> Tim. This is going to be. I'm going to try to keep this story short because I know it's going to go on forever. Tim, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? First long time uh, listener, first time caller. Thank and you. And I, I need your schooling right now because uh, my issue. I like to keep it short too because I can't stand thinking about it. Uh, my uh, girlfriend of five years is a multi-millionaire trust fund baby, and uh, I put up sixty thousand dollars to put her in a rehab. Wait, and, who's uh, the, wait, wait, wait! Stop, 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 stop! Who's a trust fund baby? My girlfriend, of five well, years. Well, uh, why did you put up sixty thousand dollars for rehab if she's a trust fund baby? Well, one of the reasons she's been back in rehab is that her family holds money over it. You know, controls the trust fund. Anything she doesn't do that they don't want her to do, you know, I mean, she, they're such control freaks, all alcoholic. But she was psychotic. She was psychotic before you started dating her, and you knew it, too. No, I didn't. Actually, she was a drug and alcohol counselor who was in a good sobriety period, and I had no clue. Yeah, but wait a minute. People who are drug and alcohol counselors, that's the first question you have to ask them. Uh, because many of them have experiences with these addictions. That's why they become counselors. Oh, yeah, and then the, what, most of them relapse because they make their work their program. So she concealed the fact that she was an alcoholic and a drug addict? No, she didn't, but I wasn't familiar enough about it. I, and she she concealed the fact that she had money, and she concealed the fact that how family was and uh, for two, almost two years. And I, and I fell in love. She was beautiful. Everything was but you already knew she was probably an alcoholic or a drug addict. Well, in retrospect, I realized how high risk she was. You know, I, I, I didn't realize it then because I never dealt with anything like that. I mean, uh, my attitude about it is if somebody is an alcoholic or a drug addict, they are out the door. That, I am not dealing with it. I'll have sex with people like that. Yeah, but there's no it, way. Well, they, they will not live in my house, and they will certainly not get my money. Well, you know what? She put up, I mean, she covered her fair share, very generous and stuff, but when I put her in rehab, you know, and I wrote the first two checks, you know, uh, under the condition I'd be paid back after the trust fund. My issue now is I don't want her back, but do I take her back long enough to get my money and then, then let her know I don't want her back? Uh, well, can you stand to live in this environment? No, but it doesn't mean I have to, I mean, I get my money quick and then say goodbye. I just, I'm afraid I may not see my money. If you know how women are. You may not see your money. You know what? This may be a very expensive lesson for you. Oh, yeah, to a extent. Well, I understand that, but, uh, you know, come on. I mean, what rock have you been living under? Alcoholics are trouble. Why would you want to live with an alcoholic? Well, I don't get recovered and for 10 years at that time. I don't care. So I, I don't care. I don't care. You're right. And by the way, drug addicts lie all the time about their, their rehab, and many alcoholics lie, too. Well, you're right. I mean, I, at the time, I, I just, you know, I mean... Yeah, I take that opposite side, the recovery side of her. I didn't know anything about it. I figured 10 years, a counselor, this and that. You know, I just, my, I, I was blind to the fact of the reality of thinking it's Because the sex was so good. That's what you were blind oh, with. Her breasts absolutely. were in your eyes. Not only was the sex so good, but she was, she was like the most giving, you know, loving person I ever met. And then, till her, till her disease came out, and I was like, wow, you know. And, uh, but the uh, real issue is, so I would take the advice on, um, 
you know, if I got it when she gets out in like three months, do I just, I was just thinking of saying hello and not telling her what I'm doing, you know, my plans are and let's go to the bank. I need that money desperately right now and get it. And I say, you know what, this isn't going to work out. It's too unsafe. It's, it's well, I mean, it depends on how much it's worth to you to have your sanity. Um, well, Personally, right I would chalk it up to experience and I would get the hell out of there. That's what I would do if it were me. Right, but what if you're, 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 you have some financial business opportunities? Like I have money invested in this. I need that money back. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah, you're not running your life in a very responsible and prudent manner that uh, that would lend itself to starting a business. Well, you're right, but that's why she's been in for six months. She gets out in four more months, and I'm like, I'm just saying, wow, I, I've been kicking myself in the ass for so long about it meeting her, which I never met her. You know what I mean? I, wish I, never oh, I understand met. that. But then now, what? how long is your uh, business uh, arrangement going to last? I mean, you have to wait four months for her to get a rehab. Then you have to wait for her to produce $60,000? I got enough money. I've got over one hundred fifty grand investment in this. And that when I did it, I would, I, I would have been clear through everything. But I'm uh -huh. so I just need that Hang money. on, I, Tim. I, I, I'm not, pardon me? Hang on a second. Russ, what did you want to say to Tim? You know, this guy, how's it going, Tom? For a long time, Wait. first time. Hey, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting how this guy is paying all this kind of money to, you know, help a woman out that is already an alcoholic addict. Now, I'm a recovering addict myself. I just came out of a rehab, and, you know, it's rather interesting. I've been married for five years, and my wife finally got sick of my bull, you know, my baloney. And so at that point, dude, what are you thinking? You should make her pay for that herself if she wants the recovery so bad then she'll go out of her way to get it if not forget it dude it ain't worth it the money yeah, as far right. as you putting as far as you putting up that money okay you need to understand that us as alcoholics addicts we will take that for granted guaranteed right and, but you're right but she's worth 10 million dollars in a trust fund so i i didn't fear of getting it back and i still don't fear of getting it back i fear what the woman's personality going to do if I do, I get the money first, uh, and just and then when she gets out, just get it, and then say goodbye. Well, first, okay, you'll check this out, man. You you got to realize one thing, okay, and that is is that you put up the money, okay. You offered it, so you get to pay the consequences. Don't be anticipating this money, because I'll tell you, as a drug and alcohol counselor, I mean, and I and when I, when I was in rehab, I saw a lot of people fall. Literally. Right. And I saw recovery people time and time again, and I've been in and out of that. So, you know, trust me, bro. She's not going to give you the money. Well, she is. She, I mean, yeah, she's even said she would at times. And, uh, and and she's that. a drunk. Say that. Of course yeah. she's going to say that. You know, and, and that's what we do. Don't you see that? We're alcoholic addicts. Russ, don't you think uh, being in ring out yourself and after that you haven't seen people that... You know, they get they get they do recover to a certain length of period, at least right when they get out. And do and, yeah, and I and I agree with you. Okay, I happen to be one of those you know those people that believe in this program and will seek out as much help as he can possibly get. However, the thing is, you need to understand. Don't expect it. I don't, don't expect it. it. My real question was, do I you know do I tell her I'm going to boot her after just get the money and then boot her, or you know? To be honest, uh, up front, I mean, I should, just, I should just do whatever it takes to get the money back is what I should do. I mean, but the thing is, are you happy? I don't expect it. Are you happy? Well, I mean, I'm, I've got 150 grand in this business, so it really oh, is. But that's not the question. Are you happy with her? I don't know anymore. You know, I mean, that's oh. why I think she's not, she's not healthy for oh, me to be around. God, Tom. You, can see how this guy, you can see how this guy gets into so much trouble. It's un- Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Good luck. Thank you so much. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Our show streams live from 3 to 8 p.m. Pacific time at our website. It's BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.